I'm Tamika Isaac Devine. I'm a wife, a mom, an entrepreneur, and a city councilwoman. Hello, I'm Jamie Devine, a husband, a father, and a community champion. I've been married to my wife, Tamika, for over 15 years. Join us as we interview some of our favorite couples, hear their stories, and be inspired. The secret to our successful marriage is that we are very intentional about our dating nights. Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Tamika. And we, we are, are the Divines. Divines. And welcome to Date Night with the Divines. Date Night with the Divines is our opportunity to introduce you guys to couples who inspire us. People ask us all the time, Tamika, Jamie, how do you do everything that you do? And how do you keep the love alive? But we wanted to introduce you to couples that inspire us. People who we admire and respect and that their love continues to inspire ours. So today we are so excited to introduce to you guys our friends Paul and Wendy Browning. Well, hello. Hello guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. And today uh, we're here with Paul and Wendy Brawley. Uh, Paul is the county auditor for Richland County. And we have with us a House of Member Representative uh, for Senate, I'm sorry, for House seat. Speaking in yeah. 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 70. Uh, for the state of South Carolina and House of Representatives. We welcome you guys here today. And again, thank you so much for coming and being with us um, today. And thank you so much for what you do in our community. Uh, both of you being public servants. And so we will start um, off just talking a little bit about um, each of you and just how you guys met. So either one can go first. So how, how did you meet? You want the fake story or the true story? <laughs> the real story. <laughs> the real, 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 real story. He has the fake story. story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you got the fake news? He got the fake news. Uh, you know, I fell all over him. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, y'all yeah, been there for 38 years. So 38 years. years. So share with us the real story about how Paul swept Wendy off her feet. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we met when we were students at Carolina USC. And um, I think, if I recall correctly, I was on my way to a math class. Um, and he was riding on Green Street at the time. Green Street wasn't blocked off, so you could actually go down Green Street. Yeah. I'm telling my age um, and go to your classes and he was driving and just wasn't paying attention <laughs> some little young fancy caught his eye <laughs> and uh, the rest is yeah, well, you know I happen to be a sophomore you know you're always trolling for the fresh oh, meat oh god right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they just call fresh meat <laughs> fresh meat that's right oh, what? fresh meat that's right <laughs> yeah but I saw, I saw this attractive young lady walking down the street and almost wrecked my car accident. And, uh, <laughs> and, and her up and fed to meet her and got out and wanted to make sure that I had an opportunity to meet her. True story. How did you introduce yourself? Well, you know, I just came up and, uh, you know, I'm from Hopkins, so, you know, we're not very bashful. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> just went right to her and, get to, and told her who I was. You okay. know, I, and, and, and as a matter of fact, I was going to Catholic, so, you know, that was a class that I didn't like anyway. So. <laughs> a good reason but, to miss But, you know, Wendy's is always timeless, so she kind of made the conversation brief. <laughs> The rest is history. <laughs> and you guys have been married 38 years. 38 years. And you have two adult children. Grown and gone. <laughs> Grown and gone. Grown and gone. So that is wonderful. Um, and then, as Jamie said before, you know, for our audience who doesn't know you, you both are elected officials. Yes. Um, now, before you were in the House of Representatives, you were on original uh, one school board and served as chairwoman. Yes in the past, um, and now you are in the House of Representatives serving the citizens of the state of South Carolina, and Paul, your auditor for um, Richmond County, which is a county-wide elected seat. Um, so those of, we know it as a dual elected <laughs> family. Um, running for office and serving is a huge commitment yes. for your entire family. It's not just the person who's an elected official, but it's the entire family. And so, of course, when you got both of those, it, it becomes a lot sometimes. So, how did you guys have that conversation about entering into public service? And then, how, did you guys set any ground rules regarding, you know, your time or your family time when y'all got elected? Yeah, you know, interestingly, at least with family, um, Wendy and I had the initial conversation. You 
know about either of us running and, and the aspects of it uh, and how it would impact our marriage, our home life, uh, and our free time. And uh, after we got past that conversation and felt that it was something that we could fit into our schedules and into our environment, um, the next thing to do was naturally talk to our children, um, who were young adults at the time that uh, we both ran, because I think uh, my daughter was, what, 16, I think, uh -huh. and, and, yeah, and my son was uh, about 25. Okay. You know, so we, we had a nine-year spread between our children. Okay. Um, so we had a young adult, and then actually a student still in high school. Um, you know, it was very important for them to understand exactly what we were going to do and then give them an opportunity to chime in before we made a decision one way or another. Yeah. So, so just remind us, uh, who was elected first and, and, and who started out first? Well, I was elected first, right? Yeah. But he started out first. Okay. Um, okay. I have to tell you this story. Um, okay. When we were dating in college, um, he was always political. He comes from a political family. Okay. And, you know, I was, you know, into politics and the stratosphere, but not right. in the common level. Right. And I, he said he was taking me on a date, so okay. I was excited. Right. And I thought, you know, I think who was in town? Was it the parliament or somebody? Some group was in town. It was wonderful. And we, I thought we were heading to the Colonial. <laughs> Carolina Coliseum at the time, but right. he took me to a stump meeting. <laughs> <laughs> he took me to a stump uh -huh. meeting. <laughs> like, who is this weird? <laughs> and, but he was really serious about, you know, his interest in politics and, and what politics could do for our community um, if you look at it the right way. And, I, and honestly, you know, while he had run for office before, uh, I was actually the first one he helped get elected. Wow. And um, that was to the school board. And then he ran um, countywide again. So you got elected in 2004, uh -huh. and then Paul, you got elected in 2006. 2006. Okay, yeah. so two years apart. Uh -huh. Very good. And, and actually, I ran for the House of Representatives, the same seat that Wendy now holds. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. when, I, when I was 26. Why? Wow. And 28. I ran okay. two years in a row, and then I ran okay. for sheriff uh, in 1988. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. It won the so, primary. Yeah. Um, just couldn't win the general this election. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. So it kind of runs in his DNA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but it, I think he's right in that, you know, public service is a way to help massive yeah. amounts of people. And if you do a good job, you can really see progress in your community yeah. and the people you serve. So, Paul, was that stump meeting date? Was that a test to see if oh, she like, really like? You know, because seriously, you got to know if people have your same interest. And clearly, politics is an interest of yours. So, was that a test? Oh, well, well, it was somewhat of a test, but they uh, actually passed the flag. It's not too well, but I see it's bad. <laughs> Barely. Barely. <laughs> And, and, the, and the other part of the story we must tell, of course, uh, Wendy ended up being a page in the Senate. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, what else? And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, we were having the conversation uh, one evening, you know, we were talking about voter registration, you know, because I was doing voter registration drives and different things. Come to find out, she was not registered to vote. <laughs> I was only uh, 17 when I came uh, to college. Okay. <laughs> he didn't yeah. tell me that part. I came early. Oh, so okay. I was only 17. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had to make a play, and I said, you know, the cylinder that you're paging for, I mean, because when it's Rocky, right. uh, the cylinder that you're paging for, if he finds out that you're not a registered voter, how long do you think you're going to continue to do that? <laughs> 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 we rushed and to we your county. Yeah. <laughs> you got registered. I got yeah. registered. Um, at 18, I was just turning 18. 18. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So y'all had several years of being public servants. Um, so how do you kind of balance your public life and your personal life? And of course, being a, having a public life, there's so many demands, especially upon you, Wendy, being in the House of Representatives. I know you probably have community meetings, yeah, churches, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So how do y'all balance that and make sure that y'all are carving out the right amount of time for just you? Well, for me, you know, uh, he has to kind of slow me down at times and say, look, Wendy, you cannot do all of these things. Um, you'll Sounds kill weird. us. You will <laughs> kill us if you do that. And, um, and I'm glad for that because um, that balance is important right. because at the end of the day, you know, our relationship is what matters the most. So we try to make time, you know, for our relationship. And what it means is that sometimes we have to say we can't do certain things in order to make sure that we're taking care of home. Um, and 
you know, now that our children are grown, that that's a lot easier. Uh, but it you do have to do it in order to be effective because otherwise, you know, you lose. You're constantly worrying about what you didn't do at home. And, and, and we've just kind of supported each other that way to understand that there'll be demands on our time. So you will often see me with him. He's doing a speaking engagement. I'm passing out the flyers right. and vice right. versa because right. we understand how it's got to work in order for us to be successful. Yeah, you know, you, you, you have to do, you, you have to contribute various ways, I would say, mm-hmm. you know. Washing clothes. And I'm not saying that in a simplistic way. Sure. But, but, but really, you, you know, you have to pitch in yeah, in That's ways right. that you may not thought and think that, you know, this is what um, marriage is about or what you should do to be assisting your mate and making sure that the, 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 the fire is still where it should be. That's right. Um, but also making the time. And, and the two of us, we, uh, every chance we get, we normally do lunch together because a lot of times we aren't able to do them together because we're out doing different things but uh, if we can carve out the time during the day you know we'll we'll enjoy lunch and kind of talk about things and you know see where she is and she'll see where I am and and then we'll compare notes usually I'm always giving them a phone what do I do about this I got this that's right that's right awesome but that's so important because that's I think a lot of people think of a date being evening, all night time, and we talk about that, that a lot of times, especially with young kids, lunch dates are really good for us because you don't have to worry about the babysitter right. and right. all that other stuff, so that's great. I love that y'all do lunch dates. We always do lunch. He says I make it to business because I'm constantly talking about something, but you know, it is a time for us to be together and share, you know, and it's convenient for lunch. So really about the business, that kind of leads me to another question. So, you know, prior to being elected officials, you guys work together, you have a business together, which I think is so cool because we talk a lot about building a legacy for our children and y'all truly have done that. Um, But how was that being business partners as well as spouses? And do you have any advice to folks um, who are considering going into business with their spouse? Well, Paul was doing technology when he okay. first left the state government, and I was doing events, and we together formed the, the publication, the Mar Woman Magazine. But I can remember, you know, and I was dialing up, using dial up in the office, and he was like, "This is not going to work for me." <laughs> this was like 18 years ago. Right. Um, so you know, we've had to make concessions. You know, um, it means for me, it has meant. Um, this project with the publication has been a real joy because we, we started it together and um, it allows us to really figure out what it is we want to do. And it's kind of interesting that our public service life is very much a, attuned to some of the things that we promote in the publication, which is good health, a good education, entrepreneurial opportunities, giving back. All those things are connected to the way we serve. So. It worked out fine, but there are days when you want to kill each other. But, <laughs> but you just you just pray over it and keep it going. <laughs> so since we talk about publication, let's make sure our, our viewers know. So it's a Mara Woman magazine. Yes. And I remember when you started, it seems like forever ago. So this has been this is 18 years. Be 19. 19. This month. 19 we started years. our 19th year. Yeah. That is that is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And so tell us about Amara Woman Magazine and really just Amara, because you've gone uh, beyond the publication. Yeah. Um, so tell us about Amara Woman and then how does that, how do you still, because although um, Paul's elected position is, is more of a full-time, yours isn't, so I know you still work in the business yeah. a whole lot, but I know that because he's your partner and spouse, he still works with it. So how do y'all, how does, how does that transition a little bit um, to where y'all are now? Well, you know, it, it keeps us quite busy uh, in terms of being able to run the business and also run our lives uh, and keep up with each other. Um, you know, the interesting thing is, to me, about business is you want to always go in business with people that you trust. Uh, and Wendy is my best friend. So, you know, it made it very easy for us to kind of do business together. Uh, you know, because uh, if you click, Every, every, and you know we're just fortunate and, <laughs> and blessed. Uh, you know that, that we we are best friends, so it, it makes uh, the publication kind of secondary to what we actually do because it kind of comes out of what we're all about. Uh, 
you know, which kind of makes it kind of interesting to us, you know, because we talk about different things, different issues that we would like to do in the magazine. Um, sometimes we're right back that we're right on the whole time. <laughs> then there are other times that, you know, wait, wait a minute, where are you going? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, you know, over the years, I, I have to honestly say, when we started the publication, um, it was really because we were we had gone for a little weekend getaway. And um, at the time, there was a lot of negative press being given to the HBCUs, if you can recall, about 19 years ago. And, and we were like, you know, this is just so negative. We need to tell our own stories. We need to be able to let people know that there are good stories in our community, in our state. And I said, somebody needs to do something about that. And he said, <laughs> well, why don't you do something about it? And honestly, you heard the thing about all the napkin, but we just started sketching out the publication that weekend. And from that, we pulled together an advisory committee, and in less than six months, we were launching at the State Museum and had our first edition already printed for the launch. So it, it has been a blessing, really, to see that no, there was a need for this. There was a hunger for people to see that there are people in your own community. You don't see movie stars on our covers. You see people who live in South Carolina who have contributed to South Carolina. And I think that that makes us different. And that's why God only knows how, but 18 years now, 19 years yeah. later, we're still here. You know, I really believe that it's because is, so is your background, either one of your backgrounds in journalism? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is, so this was truly birthed out of a passion. Yeah. Like I said, that weekend, y'all went away and you talked about. Business, yeah. business major, and I was a business uh, major and got a master's in business. So. Okay. So I don't write, the only thing I write in here uh, is the publisher's letter, and I cannot <laughs> write that into every single article right. it's in. Right, right. Um, but we have wow. some excellent writers who yeah. are experts in those particular disciplines, okay. and this gives them the creative freedom to write about something that they really enjoy, yeah. so you can see it in their, in their work. So we, as I said, we've been really blessed with that. That's good, that's good, awesome, that's awesome. So you've got the publication, but again, it is grown because you still have you have an empowerment to help empower We just tour. finished that this past fall. That was our 17th year. We started that a year after the month magazine. Yeah. And we do the television show um, usually um, six months, six to eight months out of the year. We haven't started our 2019 series season yet, but we hope to do that next month. Um, and it's been a good thing, you know, everything we do has been tied back to that initial goal to empower people by letting them see that no matter where you start, you can finish at a different place. Your, your starting place doesn't determine how your end will look like, and there'll be people to actually help you. And I think we have definitely benefited from that. I cannot explain to you how we are still here, <laughs> other than the fact that people have helped us um, keep this up. The, in the public, keep it in the view of people who care about these kind of stories. That's good. I okay. certainly remember uh, when we first started out, Chris Dale folks, um, a gentleman from one of the tobacco companies mm -hmm. came in mm -hmm. and had a serious conversation. You know, I mean, start of a business, you're looking for revenue right. in different places, but we made the conscious decision, uh, not that we are all that great, but, <laughs> but we made the conscious decision that you know, there were certain types of advertisement and products that we would not put in our publications because you can't talk about health and you can't talk about financial well-being and you can't talk about all of the things good and have something that's detriment to your community while you're trying to find you put while you're putting it in. Uh, and of course, you know, a gentleman told me he said, "Well, you won't survive six months uh, because you know what we're bringing to the table. Uh, you all are going to have a nice publication that's on the first issue, and you know we need to be in." There. And you know what I'm saying, you know, we're not gonna get you in there. So you know, you won't find alcohol, you won't find tobacco uh, products. I'm not saying that, uh, uh, you know, because I'll take a drink, I'll tell you. <laughs> but, but, but the fact of the matter is, is that you know, we won't want to encourage those kind of things. And when you pick up our publication, a six-year-old, seven-year-old can go through the publication and won't find anything offensive. Right. Good. Good. That's, That's awesome. Right. He turned down a year's worth of advertising. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> but God is good. That's right. 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 That's
that um, again, you have Stan Powell, 38 years, Barrett's, 18, what, 19 years of Amara. So, so uh, my wife is. <laughs> oh, so I was about to say, so why don't we um, go I'm ahead and uh, finish um, our appetizers okay. and um, let our sponsors, so you talk about people who support <laughs> yeah, you, so the people who support you, let our sponsors, um, a message from our sponsors, and we will be back in a few minutes. But we are pleased to be here. Our host, our venue sponsor for today is the amazing Capital City Club here in downtown Columbia. It's on the 25th floor of the tallest building of, in the downtown, currently tallest building. Um, and they are here for special events. They're here for lunch, dinner, um, and it is an amazing venue. So we want you to hear from that sponsor as well as our other sponsors. We want to thank Dr. Macy Smith. Um, for being a sponsor, State Farm Isaac Insurance Agency, Jabber and Isaac, Style by Nada, John T. Elliott Professional Hair Design, and Visions Bay Plain. So we will see you guys in just a few minutes. Councilwoman Tamika Isaacs Devine, first African American woman elected to the Columbia City Council. Committed. She is very committed uh, to the improvement of our community. Bold in that she's willing to talk about difficult issues. Not only is she a leader in her community, she's a leader in her sorority. She's an excellent example of what leadership is. I'd go anywhere, anytime to do anything for Tamika Isaac Devine. 